culture. And uh, I know a little bit about this, and I can't wait for you to hear what, what's on Chet's mind when he does these things. So, Chet Giesel. Thanks. First of all, thank you all for coming out in these crazy times again. Um, just share a quick story. Uh, if you've been around academia for the past 10 or 15 years or longer, you know about this website called Rate My Professor. Rate, R-A-T-E, you know, Rate My Professor. And you go there and you can look yourself up and see what students write about you. And uh, it's 10 years ago, so I looked, looked my name up and there, a student wrote uh, about me. They said, he's a master of going on, rambling on and on about nothing. But usually it's endearing. And I thought, well, at least, at least I'm a master of it. <laughs> so if I start rambling on about things, which I tend to do, you'll, uh, you'll know why. This is a fairly new body of work. I think it's all within the last year. Uh, when Carl came to uh, look at my work, my new work, uh, I told him, uh, the first thing I told him is I had discovered red. So a lot of this new work has become adventurous, adventurous and put, started putting more, adding more color to my work. Before this, um, I, was, I was working with uh, more of the, just the natural color of the wood and these new pieces in the last couple of years. I've been at this like eight years now, so uh, I think I'm up in the 160s now as far as the number of pieces that I, so that's what the number is on each end. That's the actual piece. Uh, that I'm at, so I'm in the 160s, 165, something like that. I, I wrote down a few notes that I just want to read. They're quotations. Uh, the first one's from Donald Judd, and he said, design has to work, art does not. So these are just kind of things I think about, because I often think of myself as not just an artist, but a designer too. Uh, Robert Henry, who was a painter of the Ashcan School. He said, uh, color is only beautiful when it means something. So uh, I always have to think about things like that when I'm working. Uh, it's interesting uh, when I read what Carl has printed about the, uh, about the work. He always says something about uh, a lot of these ideas I get when I'm <laughs> half awake or when I'm at work and I'm uh, I can let my mind wander a bit, and my mind is always wandering. Um, people have said to me before, uh, you just have too much time on your hand. And I'm like, what do you mean, Doug? What do you do when you're taking a shower? What do you do when you're washing dishes? What do you do when you're mowing the lawn? Don't you think about things? And I wonder, I guess there are people who don't, but my, I'm, I'm always thinking. Uh, uh, for those of you who don't know me, I work and teach at Ball State University. I'm the 3D studio manager and I also teach uh, foundations, uh, class 3D foundations. So uh, this all started out eight years ago. I used to give my, I still give my students an assignment every semester where they make a bio-relief and then at some point I was just, you know, thinking, uh, hey, I'm going to kind of do this too and, you know, mine has certainly taken a different direction from what I had my students work with, but it sort of grew out of a, a, an actual assignment that I used to give my students, that I still give my students every semester. It's kind of a, their introduction to the wood shop and working with hand tools and power tools. So a lot of these came from, uh, I, I was doing a lot of cleaning this last year just because of COVID, moving things around, and I came across some old Sketchbooks, some are not that old. One sketchbook is what I always take to the faculty meetings, and you know, I'm writing down important things that the director is saying. But like most people in the faculty meetings, if you ever go to a faculty meeting, uh, take a look around and you'll notice that most of the faculty are drawing or doing something with their hands or making marks. 
Uh, I always thought it'd be a good idea to have a show after a faculty meeting and hang the work of every everybody's doodles that they're doing. There's one faculty who fills whole note or whole pages of a notebook with just hash marks. And then uh, David Johnson, some of you probably know him. He always gets that little notebook out of his pocket that's about that big, and he gets his pencil that's an inch long, and he's drawing. He's looking at somebody and drawing them. And then the animators, they're all making people into superheroes. It's real fun. <laughs> so uh, I started just looking through some of my old sketchbooks. And uh, that's where I came up with, uh, I saw some of the drawings that I just, uh, this arrow. And I thought, oh, I'll see if I could translate that into a bar relief. And how would it look? And how would I play with perspective? And uh, same with these. To sketchbook. This is from, uh, I used to have an entirely different life back in the 90s. I made these lamps. Nobody's ever seen them around here. They were made out of welded steel and I would use old cameras for the heads. Uh, they were anthropomorphic and uh, this is a sketch that I found in a, uh, from a sketchbook from the 90s probably. And so I thought I would translate that into a body. See how it turned out. It's uh, obviously a little more whimsical. And I made eight in this uh, series. These are the three, three of the ones I have left. Yeah, and then I started getting into uh, the uh, primary colors. Thought I'd uh, see what I could do with that on a few pieces. Uh, as far as materials go, they're listed here. A lot of these that say pine. Uh, they're sugar pine, a lot of these small pieces. These two are southern yellow pine. You can see the grains more prominent in these. These ones that are sugar pine, uh, they come from old doors. And I buy, I find old doors on uh, the internet. And a lot of these doors, it started out as Scott Anderson giving me a door. You might know Scott Anderson, he's one of the painting professors. He gave me this old door, he was remodeling his house. And you know, the door, the house, their house was over 100 years old. So the door is actually, oh, the wood is actually probably 200 years old. And when I was making one of these, I, I found a door and I started counting the growth rings. I counted almost 200 growth rings. So I'm figuring the door, the wood in that door is probably at least 300 years old. Or, potentially older. So I think that's really interesting uh, just to think about the history of materials and it's got it has really nice tight grain, takes stain very well. Uh, as far as process goes, uh, a lot of people think that I build the box around these first. That's the last thing I do. I start off with, uh, uh, I'll just take one of these off the wall. There's a plywood back here and I build a, a frame around that out of usually it's poplars and then I start uh, drawing on the wood this is one piece of wood all this is just from one piece of wood and I draw the uh, design on that take a saw start sawing it out and then I shape the individual pieces and then sand those down to sand, hand sanders and whatnot. And then I stain them individually. So this piece has one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's six different pieces that get uh, stained. And then when that's done, I glue it all down to the plywood and I build the frame around it. That's another thing that's changed with this series. My work in the past has been more like this, where the frame, is, it's more like a box. It's the same dimension all the way around. And I started uh, with, with this body of work, making it what I call a Polaroid frame, where there's uh, heavier at the bottom. And to me, these are more frame like as opposed to uh, boxes because in the past 
they appear more like they're in a box. But I see these more as a frame, how you would map a frame. So uh, I have a lot of these at my house. I have whole walls that are covered with these, and it's really nice for me to be able to see and, and all my work together because I can see how they slowly have changed over the years. And this is certainly part of that continuum. Um, so just when I think I'm, you know, at the end, there's, there's plenty more to be done. And at this point, my head is ahead of my hands, which I guess is a good place to be. You don't want your hands to be ahead of your head. I have more ideas than I have time to make things. So that's really fun. It's frustrating. Uh, not having enough time. So is the design all one piece of wood? Mostly, yes. Okay. The back, like, like in the arrows there, the background, the yellow, the red. The... Yeah, that's all the same that's piece of wood. That's all one piece. You, you don't glue any of that, except for the... Well, they're individual pieces. They are. You cut them apart and put them together? Yes. Okay. I, when I, I cut it all apart, so I'll have, you know, this is one, two, three, four, five, six. Six different pieces I could lay them out on the table okay. and make the individual. That's how I'm able to... Like a puzzle. Like a puzzle, yeah. And I use a jigsaw. Our, uh, yeah, it's a jigsaw. And that's how they used to make jigsaw puzzles out of, with a jigsaw. Because yeah, it has a very so fine blade nice. and it can make that very fine line. Yeah, if anybody else has any questions, please, please go ahead and ask. Well, thanks so much for uh, doing that for us, Chad. You're going to be around for a little bit longer. Yeah, yeah I'll be around. And so you'll be available for yes. chit chat and more drinking and stuff. So we'll and the bitter and the bitter raindrops. Oh yeah. Oh. Well, the, yeah. <laughs> Chet's referring the to salad. our champagne grapes that we have up here, which are teak. Uh, the tiniest grapes you ever saw over here on the table, champagne grapes. And so when we, when Mark and I were putting it together, we were, we were starting to compare it to just like eating raindrops. Sour raindrops. And they're sour. <laughs> sour raindrops. So how's that for uh, you know a good sell? That's my yeah, that's my next so. bar relief. Sour, <laughs> sour raindrops. Sour raindrops. Okay. Well, thanks so much. Thanks.